Hello and welcome to the CATIA Assembly Basics lesson. In this lesson you'll learn how to use the Assembly Workbench, the Design Tree, use constraints, insert parts, manipulate parts, and do an explode. Start by opening CATIA and opening a product. Products can be differentiated from parts in that when you hover over them, parts will say part, products will say product. This is the hybrid transmission for the miniature engine. To the left is the design tree. At the top is the name of the product, and below it are all the parts contained inside the product. They highlight as you scroll over them. Below that is the constraints drop down. By expanding it, you can see every constraint that was used to hold this product together. The constraints can be found from the assembly workbench. In this case, they're up here at the top. On the left is the coincidence constraint. It can be used to make axes or edges or anything like that coincident. Next, that's the contact constraint. It's to mate faces. The offset constraint is used to set a distance between faces or axes. And the angle constraint can be used to set an angle between faces, planes, axes, edges, anything like that. At the end is the fix component. Fix is used to hold a part down and restrict it from any movement in the manipulation of the parts. When a part needs to be inserted in a product, there are three ways to do this. First is the drop down menu from the top that allows you to insert components, products, parts, anything like that, as well as constraints. There's the option to right click on the product, scroll down to components, and insert new components. Or from the toolbars, you can insert components, products, parts, anything like that. The 3D compass can still be used to manipulate parts like this. But in an assembly workbench, it has a different usage in that you can click and drag on the red of the compass and it'll snap to faces, planes of your part and allow you to manipulate them. In this case, you can now drag them or spin them about the axis of the compass. If a different part needs to be moved, you can leave the compass on the part that you were previously moving, click on the next part to activate it, and now it can be moved in directions that the compass was last placed in as well. To remove the compass from all the parts, just drag it out into the workspace and it snaps back to its home position. The update command at the bottom of the screen can be used to snap everything back into place with respect to their constraints. There's an alternate way to manipulate parts in an assembly, and that's the manipulation toolbar. Clicking on the manipulation toolbar brings up this little drop-down menu, which allows you to select movement in the X, Y, Z directions, movement through planes, and rotations around different axes. In this case, if we wanted to rotate something around the Z axis, click on the button, and then click on the part that you'd like moved. It can be drug around. The fourth selection allows you to drag along any plane, any axis, or rotate around any axis. For rotation, you need to select the axis that you'd like stuff to be rotated around, in this case, this middle one, and it'll select the part with the second click. The Respect to Constraints button allows you to move parts with respect to constraints, like we just did, or deselect it to be able to move parts in any direction. Click OK to exit, then Update to bring it all back. Finally, the Explode tool can be used to take apart an assembly. It tells us first to select what we'd like to explode. In this case, it's the planetary assembly. 
underneath it tells what product you'd like to be fixed. In this case, we would like this housing to not move in the explosion. So we'll click on that. We can select three-dimensional, two-dimensional, or a constrained explosion. I'm going to choose three-dimensional. Click the Apply button, and all the parts explode out. The scroll bar allows you to scroll back the explosion or to bring it all back out. You can click OK with all the parts out or scroll it back to the beginning and click OK for them all back together. Zooming back in, the update command is no longer active because all the parts have been moved back to their constraints. And so that concludes the Assembly Basics lesson.